Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to go ahead and explain some of the integration between ICE and uh, Prime Infrastructure. Now, I don't expect this to be a all-in-one, uh, you know, I, you know, Prime Infrastructure training course, uh, or by any means. I am probably not the best person to teach you all the in ins and outs of Prime, and I'll, I'll be the first one to admit that. But at least I'll go ahead and kind of give you a quick overview and you know, show you the different tie-ins and integrations. So, if anyone's uh, ever played around with Prime. Uh, uh, it's kind of Cisco's network management system. It's actually pretty easy to use for the most part. It's uh, there. There was an older version of it, uh, you know, 2.0 and you know, LMS, and they weren't exactly the most user friendly. But uh, as of 3.0, it's really grown up a lot, and it's all HTML5, and I, I think it's actually a pretty good product. Uh, you know, it's really great, and it, as you can see here, I. You know, I've already configured a lot already in here. So what I have configured is like a little network topology. I've added my my uh, network devices, which you can see here. And I've also added my computing devices, which I only have one server in this lab. So it's, you know, I see the virtual machines that are up and and uh, I've integrated with vCenter. So it's, it's I can view and, and kind of monitor these different uh, VMs and the actual ESXi host. Um, there's a lot of reporting you can do, and I'll kind of walk through some of this stuff really quickly. But first and foremost, I want to show you the ICE integration. So if you go to Administration, ICE Servers, and uh, click on Add ICE Server, um, it, it's really easy. You just go ahead and put in the ICE Server IP address, the username and password that it can use to log in. And it's going to essentially set up uh, where you can monitor some of the ICE functions and they get the user information for these devices that are as, as they're getting into your network. So uh, Prime gives you the ability to kind of monitor and, and, and uh, troubleshoot the network devices, some of the computing, but if you also want to kind of hand this over as roles-based access to maybe your help desk or something, getting that additional context from ICE is, is really great. So, you know, as, as an example, I'll, I'll go ahead and log into one of my uh, endpoints really quickly. And this is the one that's posturing and uh, if, you know, from the previous video that we, we set up, and I'll, I'll let that do its thing um, as I kind of walk through some of the different things that uh, at Prime kind of brings to the table. Now, you can also integrate it and, and get, get some information from uh, APIC EM and, you know, push, uh, essentially push templates over, which I already have a uh, uh, APIC EM setup, but I haven't really played around with it that much. You can use ICE as a uh, TACX server for for Prime. Right now, I'm using just the default uh, default password, but uh, I probably will be using it in the future. Uh, under reports, there's a lot of reports you can do in, in Prime. You can schedule them, or you just you know do them on the fly. But with that ICE integration, it'll point. These, if I pull these up, it'll open a window to ICE. It's not really the full integration, but at least it knows where to go. Um, it there is uh, some services like TrustSec Readiness, where it assesses the devices that are in in your uh, you know configured for Prime Management, and lets you know which ones are available to be used with TrustSec, and uh, you know essentially what e what the capabilities of each device are. In my case, my uh, virtual wireless controller is the one that's killing me there because it's, uh, it's a lab and, I, and essentially you know, the difference between a, uh, a physical wireless controller and a virtual one is that it can't do TrustSec or NetFlow. So you know, bear that in mind if you're ever wanted to use it in the real world. For, but for the purpose of my lab, I, I didn't really care that much. Um, you know, as you can see here, there's a, this isn't really uh, anything to do with with uh, ICE, but you've got a really easy way to configure uh, IWAN. It's you can wizard it out if you wanted to uh, configure it. Um, it, I think, at right out of the box, it's got the uh, it's got the uh, Cisco validated de design information in there. But you can templatize anything if you wanted to make your your deployment a little uh, a bit more unique. Uh, I can configure to converge access, uh, branch threat defense, instant access. Um, you can, you know, even have it configuring guest users. Um, you know, add a guest user, for example. Let's go and do that. So, as you can see, it's it's got some pretty nice uh, hooks in there. You can do uh, network topology maps and and data center ones as well. I just you saw the one I created on the first page, which was uh, which was essentially for my little lab there, and. Um, 
let's see, and you know, site maps, and you can also integrate uh, Prime with MSE as well as MSE with ICE uh, to create different rule, rules and roles based on where they're physically located. So if there's a top secret like production access that you know proprietary information is on, or if you're going to be viewing a uh, you know, viewing a, uh, a movie or something and you wanted to make sure no one could record it or up upload it to the internet, you know, while they're, uh, or stream it live on your wireless, you can essentially cut off access to certain parts of location except for certain roles. Um, it can do auto discovery of different uh, different um, devices on the network and uh, add them into your, uh, into your, into the management. You can uh, have it update you know, and recommend software Im uh, images and let you know about issues with uh, the current ones. Um, you can create credential profiles. that would be kind of like the template as they're discovering devices on your network. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, I also wanted to go ahead and go through monitoring with you. So there's a lot you can monitor here, obviously. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at the the ICE integration just ter in terms of, uh, of of clients that are coming on your network. So I'm going to go to monitoring, monitoring tools and clients and users. And uh, we did have just an endpoint that just came onto the network. It was on switch two, so it's probably this guy right here. So let's if I go ahead and pull this this guy up, and I can filter this and look a little easier. But you'll essentially see the, the username and password that came through the uh, the computer that's connected. Uh, this was essentially logged in as a computer on EPTLS, and then it became administrator once I logged in. Um, I can see you know a lot of information provided by ICE, the authentication me method, which was 802.1x. Um, let's say you are having an issue where somebody uh, Somebody said that they had problems logging in. You can submit this and get the authentication records and see like a failure reason, for example, and kind of troubleshoot uh, really easily from this this one console. Uh, see different events that may have happened for the specific client. Uh, start doing some different troubleshooting uh, techniques and then see the locate wired location of this uh, device. So. Um, really good information. This is a this is more from an operational standpoint. If you're integrating ICE and, and Prime, but it is nice to see those. It uh, less of a security, uh, less of security, more of operations. But it is nice to see those tie-ins because essentially you have to hand this over one day. You can't just always be in deploy mode with ICE, and it has to be there has to be a tier one, tier two uh, method of being able to troubleshoot and, and see issues before. And if you're the security administrator or the network engineer that deploys this. You know, you have to kind of have a game plan on what day one, day two support will look like. And so if you have Prime, you can incorporate that into it. Of course, you know, with ICE, you can already, there's already built-in help desk roles that you can use to, to limit access and give them access to only live log. But if you're tying it into, uh, you know, Prime, you can create these roles-based access where it's, you know, they can do also do some light network troubleshooting and, and really easily look up the authentication events in the last, you know, say 24 hours for that computer or, or that user. So um, instead of tra training them on two different products, maybe incorporate ICE into your, uh, into your Prime and, and give them a troubleshooting guide for that only. Well, I think you... That was about all I wanted to show in this video. It was re really going to be a quick one, but I, I did want to show you some of the different things you could do with ICE and Prime together. All right, thank you.